third best story in the show. <laughs> Rolling on the bench laughing at Robertson's free throws. The second best story in the show, J.R. Smith, J.R. like only J.R. can. But the best story in the show, do the loop de loop and pull. Next question. It's a legitimate question. Next question. I mean, it is what it is. It's not that funny. <laughs> Let's go around the horn. It's great to see him smile. Isn't it? It's Around the Horn, the show of competitive banter. Here's Tony Rielli. I'm going to want to talk about this Thunder Rockets game and everything and how it played out. And this was amazing to me. Adam telling Russ he's going to miss, then missing, and Russ hitting the bomb after getting the pass from Adam. And we're definitely talking Robertson and the free throws and the Rockets bench. Maybe I'll save that for the showdown. But you guys are going to want to start here, so let's do it. Say Russell and the team haven't played well. Don't say when Russell goes out, the team don't play well. It don't matter. We in this together. That may that may be Russell, but I've asked Stephen a question, cool. and it's, it's a legitimate question. You. Next question. It's a legitimate question. Next question. I realize I'm asking four members of the media this. The mute button is ready if you get chesty. But that question by Barry Trammell of the Oklahoma. So that answer from Russ, to so that non-answer from Stephen Adams, because Russ wouldn't allow it. Who's right? Who's wrong? And what's the real issue here, Bamani? I mean, am I allowed to be team everyone on this one? It was certainly a fair question to ask because we have seen in two of the last three games the Thunder build leads going into the end of the third quarter, Russ sits down, and then the lead evaporates. So it's a fair question to ask. At the same time, we asked for our athletes and stars to be leader guy, and in that situation, he's stopping Steven Adams from having to be like, well, you know, if we're going to be honest, me and these other guys aren't actually very good. Like, how exactly was he supposed to answer that in a way that was going to be productive? There was none there. So Russell Westbrook jumps in with a which he has a bit of a history with. So I don't think that anybody did anything wrong in this situation. Everybody playing their part in this cat and mouse game that we have with these post-game press conferences. Let's go to Bill Plaschke. Oh, I, I just think I'm so sick of Russell Westbrook these days. What he did during that press conference was exactly what he does on the court in the fourth quarter in the playoffs. The ball, the, you know, the, the, the shot was for his teammate to take. He hogged the microphone. He hogged the moment. Mm. Steven Adams just sat there and watched him while he awkward, clumsily tried to defend himself. He should have let Steven Adams answer. It was a legitimate question from a legitimate reporter. And again, what we see on the court is what we saw in that press conference room. Russell Westbrook trying to take charge and doing it very ungainly and unseemly like. Sarah Spain. I am completely in opposition to Bomani. You have to take a side on this, and it was a fair question. And if you don't want people to talk <laughs> about this, then just let Steven Adams answer it in a totally cliched way, which is what he would have done. Yeah, Russ is a great player, man. It hurts us a lot when he's not on the floor, so we like to have him out there. But we need to do a better job when he gets a breather. And then it's done, and we move on, and we ask other questions. Instead, it becomes a thing where we're talking about it way more than we would have because Russ needs to step in and pretend it's about how they're a team. The question is isn't how are your team failing it's how is just the players that are not russell westbrook failing when you're on the bench and it was a legit question okay so bill is opposed to russ here sarah spain's opposed to russ and bomani jones don't think we're not getting back <laughs> yes. to you bomani but first we're gonna go to frank isola you know what i've learned my lesson on this show so i'm siding with sarah spain yes. all the way on this one <laughs> let's remember a couple of things about russell westbrook when kevin durant left via free agency what was being leaked out Part of it was to make it look good on Durant's end. You know what? It's tough being Russell Westbrook's teammate. So I think when he's up there at the podium, he's very defensive about, you know what? I don't want you to separate us. We're all in this together. But the bottom line is... Is that a course, bad thing, if I can interrupt there, Frank? Is that sentiment bad then? Well, the, the bottom line is don't have both guys up there. Steven Adams, there's no reason for him to be up there with Russell Westbrook. Well, that's not Westbrook on Russ is, either, right? Well... You know what? But it's the league's problem because the question is addressed to Stephen yeah, Adams, thing, and yeah. it's a theme of the series. They're on minus 40 when Westbrook doesn't yeah. play. It's a legitimate question. Bomani, you're back in to pick up the pieces of your argument. I ain't got to pick up the pieces of nothing because I'm not <laughs> questioning the legitimacy of the question. I understand why the question was being asked. But if you wanted to question it, he did try to ease it in there without directly saying, boy, these guys really seem to stick when Russ isn't in the game. He's like, whoa, do they get an energy boost? It's not about an energy boost. It's the fact that those other guys just aren't that good. I know it. Russ knows it. Steven Adams knows it. But, man, Steven Adams didn't look so excited about answering that question himself. He's over there twirling his hair like, ooh, let's talk about something else. <laughs> let's see if Sarah Spain knows it. Does that appease you, Sarah? 
No, of course not, because the question that they asked was very important and legitimate to their success in this series. Frank laid out well, the is saying that, though. Yeah. Yeah. To be Jay, fair for this whole uh, because, thing that's going on just here, because Bomani Westbrook does knows, Just because Westbrook knows that that's true and his teammates know that that's true, you don't get to ignore it. Their basketball consists of the five people that are on a court at any time. I don't care if you say we're all one unit. As soon as somebody goes out and there's a new unit on the floor, you have to address what went wrong in those moments. That's a standard question. Just answer it. Go Plasky after the horn. Watch the replay. Steve Adams is ready to answer the question, and Russell says, hold on, Steven, and he sits there looking like a dope the rest of the interview, which is what we see in the fourth quarter of every playoff game. <laughs> and I, okay. you guess what? I, I, he shouldn't I, pass him the ball there. The he probably time. shouldn't yeah, have passed him the ball right there. there. I don't know if he looked like a dope, honestly. He looked like there's a leader of a team, right? I mean, isn't that what we, we think? No, Steven <laughs> Adams looked like he was just sitting there. Like, the what question was, was the leader of the team. He doesn't owe us an answer, man. We are not owed these answers. I saw. Do you have the last word? No. I, this is why he's an MVP oh, he candidate because he always has to take over for his teammates. But the problem is when you take over in the fourth quarter, take over in the press conference, sometimes to the detriment of your team, and that it's happens. It's a on Sunday. press conference. I mean, what are we talking it about makes, here? It makes it look. Cheers to Barry good. Trammell for asking the question. Yeah, and keep asking. Even horns. We're gonna move <laughs> keep on. Keep asking it. Celtics new life. I want to ask you guys how much of this series being too soon now is them playing like a team at end of the season, the one seed, and how much of it is Rondo being out and Boston being able to avoid being tripped up, <laughs> but also roll tape. <laughs> When you're allowed to discontinue your dribble on every mm -hmm. possession, he is impossible to guard. I mean, that's not the reason why I'm an impossible cut. <laughs> but, I mean, it is what it is. It is kind of that funny. Sarah, uh, you're in Chicago. This is your account, I guess, right? So what's Hoiberg saying here? Listen, I, I don't begrudge him any effort he can take to get a tiny little piece back from the referees if he can. We don't re usually see travels called. We don't usually see carries called. Yes, does Isaiah Thomas do that sometimes? Absolutely. Is that the reason the Bulls are losing? No, it's because MCW and Jerry and Grant are a minus 21 because the ghost of Dwayne Wade's out there. Jimmy Butler's doing everything. We got Joffrey Laverne shooting air balls, and we somehow have Isaiah Cannon making a playoff debut and actually mm. contributing. This team stinks, okay? But they just need to get everything Tell us they how can. you really feel, Fred Sarah. Hoiberg can't figure out how to get Isaiah Thomas Thomas in trouble when he's taking over a third quarter with four fouls. You can't do the actual things that it takes to coach. Then I guess he's got to do it in the post game afterwards and complain a little bit and see what he can get. Frank Isola. Hey, Sarah, at least you have the Blackhawks. Oh, wait, that's right. They're also gone. Oh, so, uh, now, oh now you're going oh, after. Oh, well, you, oh, know you know what? If that's what you want to do with your life, Frank. <laughs> When he went up to the podium, down. he was looking for the same impact that Dave Fizdale got with the, you know, take that for data rant that he went on. He looked very uncomfortable. Don't be so surprised if that wasn't a player or maybe somebody in the front office who said, you know what, let's put it out there, try to maybe throw his, him off his game, get into the ref's head, because Fred Hoiberg, who's a good guy, looks so uncomfortable sitting there explaining that. Bill, does that even make sense to you, what Frank's saying there? Is that a possibility? Have you heard that happening from teams before? Maybe the front office ordering the, uh, the hit? Oh, yeah, for lack sure. Of a oh, word? they had beatings after the game, sure. But I thought Hoiberg, in this case, looked as desperate as those Blackhawks did look against the Predators. I think he was <laughs> oh, really boy. flailing oh, boy. out this there. Oh, going to get bad was, for you could, guys. You know, Allen Iverson has been carried the ball his entire career. They're not going to make that call. Yeah. Nobody's going to make that call. But he realized, that, you know, Thomas scored, it was successful on 71% of his layups. 14 points in the paint. They couldn't stop him. He had no way how to stop him. He's just throwing things around now. And Bomani Jones? Yeah, I do love the idea that Fred Horberg is going to be the one to get them to call carrying. At this moment, he's made that bold <laughs> proclamation that's going to change the direction of the entire league, and they're going to call it. Like, this isn't one of those things where you're going to get into the referee's head on it. It sounded like he was frustrated. I imagine it could be frustrating. But as Sarah pointed out, Isaiah Thomas is the worst defensive guard in the NBA. He carried four fouls for a significant stretch of that, and not once did the Bulls exploit that. Not once did they try to go at him. You should try to go at him just because he's five foot nine and bad at defense, let alone because he has all those fouls and he's killing you on offense, so you need to wear him down. So it's good for Fred Hoiberg that we're talking about him discussing the carrying as opposed to the fact that he got out coached in that game and there's no way around it. Bane back in. I just wanted to point out to Frank that we, we sent you the husk of Phil Jackson and you're stuck with it for at least two years. And Derrick Rose, who we just traded, missed us so much that he came back and watched our game because your Knicks aren't even in the postseason. So have fun <laughs> All right, with that. Frank, here you go. You wanted this. You got it. I'm, I'm going to stick to the game. We've come a long way in the oh, NBA. Now he wants we to stick to the game. We used to complain about the Blackhawks. Now he wants to stick to the game. about seven foot, 350 pound Shaquille O'Neal and how he's getting away with stuff in the post. Now we're talking about five foot nine Isaiah Thomas <laughs> dominating the Bulls about him carrying the ball. Come on. Give me a break. Retreat.
Retreat, retreat. We're going to move right. on. Steve Kerr out <laughs> for the Warriors. The team went 39-4 and without him last year, as you know, but that was in the playoffs. So, Phil Plasky, what is Mike Brown coaching now and for the undetermined future due to this team? I think they're fine, and it's just a sad story, and Steve Kerr's such a great guy, but this is a kind of veteran team that's been there before. I saw Phil Jackson go through entire playoffs and never leave the bench. Once they know what they're doing, as the Golden State Warriors do know what they're doing, and you look at their record without him last year, and Mike Brown is a defensive-minded coach. Defense is actually what wins games for them. They're fine. They'll be fine offensively. They'll be fine. Sarah Spain? It's interesting how we keep having to create these scenarios wherein we can actually talk about the Warriors having a weakness, whether that's Durant out or Livingston out or Kerr out. So it makes the conversation more interesting. I think they're going to be fine. And we actually saw this before with Luke Walton, 39-4 and four when he took over for Steve Kerr. I realize that was a regular season, not a postseason. But I think they're going to be okay. Of course, ideally, they would get Kerr back, particularly when it comes to the, to the NBA Finals, which I anticipate them being in. Um, but for the meantime, he's got to get healthy. Bomani Jones? I mean, if we could just assume he's going to be okay, I don't understand why he makes $5 million a year. I don't think we have a great answer for how this is going to go. But we're talking about Mike Brown becoming the new head coach. Is he going to be the new head coach or is Draymond Green going to be the new head coach? Because when <laughs> Steve Kerr was out the last time, Draymond Green was, in effect, the coach. And when Draymond coaches, Draymond shoots more. He also shoots better, but he shoots more. Let's see how this plays out. It shouldn't be huge necessarily, but I can't say, ah, oh, they'll just be fine. I don't know what's going to happen. Mm, that's a real interesting point, Bomani. Best case scenario is they win without him, and then he's He's like, well, what am I doing here anyway, right? Or, or people could be asking that. Frank, would you be asking that? Well, perhaps. And let's not forget that <laughs> a long time ago, Mike Brown went to a finals with LeBron James and four guys. And the Golden State Warriors have more than four guys. And as long as Kevin Durant's going to be healthy, Curry, Draymond Green, and Thompson, they'll be just fine. Okay. You know, something struck me when Bill Flashman said we had Phil Jackson. He never left the bench. Frank, you've had Phil Jackson the last couple years, and he's never gotten near a bench. <laughs> he wants to be, though. He's kind of pulling the strings. Taking like a I'm break right Sarah. here. Buyer sells next. Yeah, Rip Carmelo didn't call. Don't. Woo! Flashman, man. Show. That's Ooh, after the horn points for Flashman. at the horn. <laughs> <laughs> Buy or sell. Red Sox and Orioles. Friday night, Machado into Pedroia. He hasn't played since. Nothing Saturday. Nothing until the eighth inning Sunday. Matt Barnes over the head of Machado. Easiest case of lip reading ever. Pedroia, that wasn't me. We should have hit you yesterday. That's Bull Bleep. That's him talking about Barnes. And then just to throw some more kerosene on all this, Zach Britton saying if Pedroia can't control his teammates, there's a bigger issue over there. Uh, Plasky, whose side are you on, and what do the unwritten rules say about how all this went down? I'm on the Orioles' side on this. This is Pedroia more than anyone should know. That's how he plays. It was a hard, fair slide. Replays from every angle showed it was a fair slide. Mm -hmm. And yet, Pedroia, you know he has something really? to do with the ball, getting thrown at the guy. Absolutely. And you know, he's, he's got a right to the base. So I think the unwritten rule was Pedroia violated about by trying to get his club, some young pitcher to get in trouble by throwing somebody's head. That's ridiculous. Sarah, as we go to you, we're going to show the replays that Bill Plasky wants us to show. And you can wonder if this is a, a legit slide. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, I disagree. It doesn't look completely legit. He easily could have had his foot remain on the base instead of going up there at the end and hitting him in the knee. That being said, I'm on nobody's side. In fact, I'm going to run for the president of sports, which is something that I just invented right now, and I'm going to run solely on a platform of getting rid of the stupid unwritten rules of baseball because they're the dumbest thing in all of sport, and that is saying something because sports is full of some dumb stuff. Well, I absolutely hate them. Are you with Space Madam President here? Remember that time when Sarah told me I had to pick a side that she came out here and didn't pick a side? Yeah, that was funny. Anyway, if I had to look at this, I have this question. I, 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 I have this question about Pedroia. Was he supposed to come in and be like, hey, guys, no throwing at their heads today? Like, I don't really understand how that goes, but I do have a problem with them waiting as long as they did. I don't care if it was a knuckleballer out there on Saturday or not. That he got a knuckleball at the head if, that's, if this is that important. Wow. Bomani saved Bomani. that through a commercial break. <laughs> and he held on to that, and then it just came to him. Go ahead, Frank Isola. To paraphrase the great Yankee broadcaster, that's baseball, Sarah. What they're doing there it happens in a lot of games, but when you cross the line is when you're throwing at somebody's head. You want to hit Machado in the hip or in the butt, go right ahead. You're throwing at the head, that's out of line. I want to continue this, but we need to move on. And this theme of beef on beef on beef. Let's go to Wizards Hawks. This series has been feisty. Tonight, game four in Atlanta. 
Um, something to consider here as you think about it Paul, at all. do you feel like this um, matchup between you and Markeith is becoming personal? He just said in the locker room that you're a crybaby. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Oh. The intruder in the background. Look at this. Pull out, please. Come no. on. Let's do this. Intruder can't even hear it. Now, yes. <laughs> all right. So between Schroeder and Wall and Marquise Morris and Paul Millsap, whose side are you on, and, and how's this all going down tonight, Sarah? Uh, man, I'm on the side of back in the day when NBA fights were more interesting, like someone sleeping with someone's mom or something. Cry, baby? Come on. Who cares? I, listen, I'd like to see more of Morris on the court actually hitting threes and blocking shots and, and being a part of the series. Uh, also, I would never get on the wrong side of either Morris brother. I can't tell them apart, but they've been arrested for felony assault and robbery and everything else. So if I'm ever asked to be on a side, I'm not going to be opposite those. Well, Jones? I think that's the first time I've ever heard Paul Millsap talk, by the way. Now, I don't even know if there's a side to be on here because we don't have anything here, right? We've got one guy saying the other's a crybaby and the other one being like, okay, and like, what are we supposed <laughs> to do with that? This is not authentic beef. Now, Wall Schroeder, Wall really doesn't like Schroeder. That's the most fun one of all of it. Right. You think it's going to come out tonight in the court, Frank Isola? I think it absolutely will. And this is what we like about the Wizards. They did this with the Boston Celtics. They're doing with Atlanta. They stand up for themselves, and then they back it up on the court. As for a crybaby, Paul Millsap, 21-10, and 10, back-to-back games. First Atlanta Hawks since the great Moses Malone to do that. No clap. This is one time it's good that the NBA had two players at the podium to provide perspective. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a good so call-out. Cheers to the like NBA for earlier. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it come out tonight on the court, Bill? No, it's been a no. Good John, series. John Wall's. This is John, Wall's, this is John Wall's series. You want to pick John the game tonight just so I have somebody to mute tomorrow? Just yell it out. Washington or Atlanta, guys. Washington. Wizards. Washington. Everybody's got Washington. We'll move on. 2-2 between L.A. and Utah. The Clippers aren't dead, but with Blake Griffin out for the postseason, a.k.a. Blake Griffin for the postseason, are they dead, a.k.a. Clippers, Bomani? I mean, I don't know if they're dead necessarily. They still have a chance to win this series, though I was surprised to see Rudy Gobert wind up coming back in this one. It's just crazy with Blake Griffin. I've seen so many people say this means it's time for them to break up that team like they didn't lose last night. Nice, Zola. Better pick up Dwayne Wade or Joe Johnson, who's already won two games in this series. Gordon Haywood only played nine minutes, and they won. Advantage Utah. Flash. It's really weird because the Clippers are going to win this series but they're going to lose the next round, and, and, and they'll never be the same Clippers again. Blake has probably played his last game as a Clipper. They're going to get blown up after all this. Do you think that's the right so call? Do you think that's the right yes, move? Yes, absolutely. I've sat through six years of this playoff stuff. You need a change. Something has to six change. Six years? Absolutely. We never get playoff stuff. Can they get anything in return that's even equal to <laughs> value? Well, no, I mean, all that? He's going to leave as a free agent, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a war of attrition, so it's hard to predict, right? Because it seems like every single game somebody goes down. I do think the Clippers are going to win this round and then get out in the next round, so we're going to end up in the same conversation. And this iteration has seen its final days. they got to get somebody else instead of Blake Griffin, who fits better with the system they oh, run. Really? I wish I could have a four-person showdown. Maybe we'll have a four-person showdown, but this iteration can't stay right now. we got to say goodbye to Spain, Madam President. Bill's tired of the playoffs. And I told her, she is too late for you, Frank. Bill, Bo. Go down next. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Feel best about themselves. I'm going with the Penguins because they're playing the star-crossed Capitals and because Sidney Crosby, 73 points in 56 games against the Caps, he owns them. Mm. I'm going owns. with the Penguins. Yeah. Owns. Yeah, at the same time, there is a team left in the postseason that is up 13-3 to in goal margin and swept in the first round, and I will say that is them, the new team that loves me more than any other their fans, the Nashville Predators. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's the first oh, time you, I think like someone talked about the Preds and not the Blackhawks losing in round one. That's a point for Bomani <laughs> Joan, NBA weekend. Oh, boy, this is so good. Rocket Bench laughed at Robertson, 2 of 12 from the line. J.R. Smith tried to ice out a game and a series with a behind-the-back pass. And Robin Lopez responded to Jay Crowder tossing a shoe by trying to knock Crowder's when Crowder was preoccupied talking to the referee. Bomani, what's the highlight of those three? 
I mean, you got to go with Robert Lopez because that's a quick thinking right there, right? That's a man that went to Stanford. That's high intellectual horsepower to be like, okay, while we're here, I'll just fiddle with his shoes too. I was no, I'm going with got to go with J.R. Smith because that could actually change the game. Paul George had a shot to tie the game because of that behind the back pass. That was a game changer. Got to go with that. It's true. How have shots that Paul George had taken to tie or, or win games late in games gone recently? Not two or thirty. We're going to move on. Showdown three is the messy goal. And I'm going to ask you what's better, the goal or Ray Hudson's call? The, the call definitely, he's talking about tarantulas in his pants. His call is almost like one of my leads that I write for my Laker game, game column. So. <laughs> All right, Bomani Jones, how about you? Nah, 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 because I look at the goal, and I'm like, the goal couldn't have been better. The call, however, could have been better because he said tarantula in his pants. Imagine if in that accent he had said tarantula in his drawl. See, there was room for improvement if you had put those two things know. together. <laughs> Net, Messi did the best that could be done. Uh, comparative analysis, uh, literary comparative analysis from Bomani <laughs> Jones. This has been a great show today. For uh, three words or fewer, what would your FaceTime be, Bomani? Draft preparation, fans. Flashkey? Hash Browns. Hash Browns it is. <laughs> That's only two words! I am very disturbed. <laughs> McCain Foods has recalled in nine states frozen hash browns. Why have they done this? Because there's bits of golf balls in the hash browns. Golfers Whoa. keep your balls <laughs> out of the potato fields. I can see myself at breakfast, big old hash brown from... Oh, oh, the uh, Titleist. No, that's, that's horrific. And hash browns are my favorite food. I got bags of them in my freezer right now, and I'm going to throw them away because there's golf balls in them? Come on, <laughs> duffers. Have some respect. I think that was a FaceTime worth hearing, I think. And you know what? Here's another thing, Bomani, to keep that face on you. All-time, Plashkey, 15-2 versus Bomani Jones and Joe. Oh, 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 How is that possible? The game.